Why should you be grateful when you deserve it? When in actuality, we don't deserve anything, but we get to enjoy everything that's in God's heart for us. Like none of us are where we should be, um, but we are here because of Christ's finished work at the cross. Well, welcome everybody to Digital Care Group. So excited that all of you are here joining us. And I would love to see also in the chat, where are you tuning in from? I want to see all the different places that you're tuning in from to join us for Digital Care Group right now. I see Alaska. Do we have another one from Alaska? I see Portland, Oregon, Wisconsin, all over the map. Absolutely incredible. Pennsylvania. Just throw it out there. We love to see this. It's incredible. All across the map, there are all of you tuned in, a part of this community. I'm excited to have Pastor Darren with us. Pastor Darren, good to see you. Good to see everyone. And I'm coming in from Singapore. <laughs> Coming in from Singapore. And is there a thunderstorm right now? There is a thunderstorm. We are temperatures about 82 and also 82% humidity. <laughs> so, <laughs> so some news flash there. It's actually really cool for us to be at 82. <laughs> wow. Wow. 80% humidity is pretty fierce, pretty intense. It's usually 100. So I'll take 82. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I got news for you right here in Dallas. It is 101 degrees. Um, right, Lindsay? Yes, we are baking here in Dallas, um, but we are in air conditioning, so I'm so thankful for that. And just super thankful to see all of your beautiful faces. It's always such a joy just to hop on here and get to hang out with everybody. Deaconess Jessica, you're hailing from Singapore. You're in Singapore right now, aren't you? Yes, I am. And in a different part of town, I'm in the Northeast. I think Pastor Darren is maybe a little bit in the West. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so in, in Singapore, the weather report always says that, you know, light thundery showers all over the island throughout the day. So you don't know actually what the weather report is. <laughs> it is so general. Um, and, you know, when Pastor Darren is experiencing a thunderstorm, it's um, you know, dry here. No rain. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's just yeah. this tiny little island. Can't believe mm -hmm. it. <laughs> I think we're only probably about 30, 40 minutes apart. Y yeah. One just end to the other end. It's the whole of Singapore. <laughs> Jeez. As far as the east is from the west, only 40 minutes. Thunderstorm, <laughs> no thunderstorm. Wow. <clears throat> that is uh that is wild how do you guys prepare for the day do you have you have to bring an umbrella with you everywhere you what do you do i mean you gotta be ready <laughs> <laughs> okay okay but i must say that you know we have a lot to thank for because we do have very good sis you know um, provision of covered walkways from you know estates to the bus stop to the you know mass rapid transit the trains um, you know, there's pretty much a lot of work gone in there to, you know, make it um, weatherproof. So if it rains, you'd still pretty much be, you know, sheltered. Yeah. So thank God for good governance, mm -hmm. government and, and administration. Thankful. See, you guys learned something new uh, today for Digital Care Group. You can't just get this anywhere. I just want to encourage you. There's so much, right, that we get to enjoy here. <laughs> The digital care group. And I want to ask all of you also right now, how many of you are super excited? Share with me with one word, emoji, to know that even this week, we just launched midweek services. Are you excited about that? Uh, okay. One word, an emoji. I see smiley faces. I see hands clapping. I see words that say wonderful, yay, exuberant, smiley face, three <laughs> hearts around it. That's incredible. Uh, I feel the same way. Um, it's an exciting thing because we get to come together every Sunday. We get to come together for Digital Care Group uh, on demand. And I'm thankful for Wednesday midweek services that we just launched. That's amazing. I want to remind all of you that this session is available on demand at gracerevonline.com slash care group uh, for the purpose of you being able to enjoy this at your own pace. If you feel comfortable. I just believe there's a grace revolution happening in your home, in your neighborhood, in your town, in your city. You feel comfortable, people you know that you're comfortable with. Hey, come on over. Let's discuss. Let's use this care group as a time to fellowship and have community centered around the finished work. 
Um, I think that's powerful when it's found in community and, you know, especially one in your own home with people, you know, that you feel comfortable with your family, your loved ones. That's amazing. Uh, if you miss it, this session, if you're like, oh, I got something to do, you should, maybe you're staying on right now after service and you're like, I can't stay. Um, you know, I got something to do. It's OK. You can go to the website. You can enjoy it. But we want to thank everybody who does stay on after service for Digital Care Group. We see you. We're very thankful for you. And uh, we just know that the Lord has something very special for all of you today. Yeah. And if you are um, just catching them on demand, if you've just kind of been, you know, binge watching just the care groups and watching the services online, but you have more of a um, desire to get deeper, have more community, we have our online lobby. And it is such a beautiful space. I love going into the lobby and just seeing what everyone is writing to each other. Um, there's uh, prayer request in there. There's praise reports. There's people just catching up with one another. It's just such a beautiful place to be. So if you are craving a little bit more community, um, jump into the lobby because it's it's really an awesome time just to even read through all the different prayer requests. And there is one that I actually want to highlight this week. Um, it's from Linda, who I believe is on tonight. Um, but she was sharing, she shared a praise, um, a prayer request that she was just having a rough week. She had some things going on. So she put it up in the lobby and she just had a bunch of people praying for her, which happens every time someone puts up a prayer request, everyone joins in, gathers together. Um, and then she shared a praise report after the fact, and I'll read it to you here. It says this past week was emotionally and mentally hard for me in many ways. I asked for prayer here and was so encouraged by you all loving on us. Thank you. There was a tangible sense of peace and inner joy, even through the hardest moments. So that's kind of what you can get in the lobby. It's not just, you know, typing back and forth to one another. You really have people praying for you, which is such a beautiful thing. And if you are also needing more prayer, we have our digital prayer experience. And that is um, prayers that have been recorded by our GRCO pastors and leaders. And it's for specific things. So if you are going through something personally, or if you know somebody who is going through something and could use some extra prayer, have them um, just send over the link to them and have them tune into that. And we believe it'll really be a blessing to them. Amazing. Thanks, Lindsay. Just want to encourage you guys, take advantage of this because um, it's really put in place with you in mind. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage all of you also, uh, Holy Communion. Uh, we are going to partake of Holy Communion together. So it, now would be a really good time to go and prepare whatever you're going to be using to receive Holy Communion um, together with the community as we continue on with Digital Care Group. I'm excited for this one. Pastor Darren, mm -hmm. Deaconess Jess, I'm excited. I uh, believe that the Lord has something special for all of you. We're going to be talking about uh, Thanksgiving. We're going to be talking about Thanksgiving. We're going to be talking about gratitude. Um, we're going to just share a clip from Pastor Prince, a message that he had preached, The Cure for a Dissatisfied Life. So I want to encourage you. We're going to lean into this clip. We're going to, we're going to watch it. We're going to receive from Pastor. And then we're going to have conversation after. And we want to encourage you. Join in on the conversation. Get in the chat. Share what, what the Lord's speaking to you. And let's, let's get around this conversation around Thanksgiving and gratitude together as we lean into this clip from uh, Pastor Prince. Now, the position is what position? gratitude. Thank God. And I think that this quality, right, is more and more lost. You know why? Because if you look at all the advertisements that you watch in between uh, your you know, movies or your shows or whatever you're watching on social media or uh, you know, on TV or whatever, you, you'll find that ever so often, you get, you get bombarded with this message. You deserve this perfume. You you're worth this. You deserve this break. Then they show you know, vacation. You deserve that. Then they show you all kinds of dress, you know. Uh, you deserve this. Wow, you know, like really uh, um, slimline, the latest technology in this car. Yeah, and cars are so expensive nowadays. And, and, you know, it's like everything is, you know, like you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You are worth it. You deserve it. See, the constant bombardment that you deserve it creates a, 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 a social order of people that become... I'm not talking about Singapore alone. I'm talking about the whole world. I'm speaking generally right now. You know, you know what it does when it tells you, you you deserve it? Then finally, you feel like 
I should get what I long deserve. And when you get it, you are not grateful. Why should you be grateful when you deserve it? It creates angry, resentful people. And I'm telling you, the world that I have lived for some time now, I can tell you this, compared to what it was before around the world, I'm speaking generally, not Singapore alone, speaking generally all over the world. A lot of angry people. Where did all this come from? Angry. Angry because they feel that they're not getting what they at home, family breaks down, and, uh, and things like that. It's because, you know, I'm not getting what I deserve. I thought when I married you, I would get this. But you know why? Because this good life is what I deserve. We forget grace. And interestingly, the word grace is also the word in the Greek. Grace carries is also the word for thanks. So we forget to say thanks. We don't say thank you to our loved ones anymore. All right? Or we say it mechanically. We're not grateful deep down. We should be grateful. I'm grateful for all of you. I'm grateful to be in a church like this. I'm grateful I got my pastors who are my dear friends. I'm grateful for every one of them. I really am. I'm grateful for my family. And they, they are gifts from God. But if I feel that I deserve them, I deserve my son, I deserve my daughter, no, it's a gift from God. And you know what? You don't get to be with them forever. You should thank God. Oh, your health. But you see, I got this pain here, you know, Pastor Prince. But 90% of health, do you thank God for that? Do you thank God there are people worse off, can't even walk, laid back? We complain for small pain, for small ache, when so much of us, what happens when you thank God for that 90% of your body that is healthy? Is there a principle that says you thank God for something good, it will increase? You all know this, I've thought on this before, come on. You thank God for something good, it multiplies. You thank God for something good, something that He has done, He has supplied, and it even increases. Amen. I'm thankful. All of us are thankful here at GRC Online for all of you. Um, we're very thankful that we're able to be a part of this blessed church that gets the center around Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord, that we get to be a part of this. Isn't that amazing? We get to be a part of this church. I'm so thankful. Um, sometimes I just think about where Lindsay and I came from and our family and that we get to be in a relationship with like Pastor Darren and Deaconess Jessica and part of Pastor Prince's church and just be, get to do this with all of you. Thankful for that. And I love how Pastor Prince was talking about like, what is your dissatisfaction like tied to? What is your anger tied to? A lot of times it's it's tied to our focus on the things that we don't have that we think we deserve. We think we deserve. Um, he, he really broke that down and spoke to like how the commercials in between, you know, whatever we're watching always say, you deserve this, you deserve that, you deserve this. You de and sometimes we're like, yeah, yeah, you're right. Because the day was tough. Maybe you had a tough day. Maybe, maybe you're in a really tough spot. For me, I feel like that's when I'm susceptible to that message even more. The message of you deserve this. You deserve better. Like uh, you shouldn't put up with that. Um, when I'm like in a place of just having a rough day or going through some challenging times, I feel like if I'm not careful to go back to my worth being anchored to the cross, I will inevitably work for the things that I think I deserve. And then when I get those things, I find myself dissatisfied. <laughs> it's just amazing to see how there's that correlation there. I think sometimes, even for me, that I'll, I'll be in a mood, I'll be upset, I'll be angry about something maybe, and just dissatisfied. And it's because if I trace it back, it's like, man, I, I feel like maybe somewhere along the way, I just got familiar and, and entitled and thought that I deserve this. 
when in actuality, we don't deserve anything, but we get to enjoy everything that's in God's heart for us uh, freely because of the cross by his grace. I was thinking about, I was thinking about this verse because Pastor Prince in another part of the sermon kind of talks about like when Jesus um, experienced the multiplication and that miracle took place with the five loaves and the two fish. And, you know, there was a multiplication, there was a supply, there was a feeding of multitudes and even some left over. It was interesting, like he, he mentioned this in part of the sermon that the Holy Spirit, the way he narrated God's word, you would think he would, he would, and he does make a big deal out of the multiplication and the supply and that people were fed. But you know what's interesting? The big deal and what was magnified about that whole experience was that Jesus took what they had and gave thanks. And I thought that was so powerful that what preceded the miracle and what can precede the miracles in our lives, the things that are on our heart, the thing that we're dreaming about is maybe not um, just being so fixated on that thing coming to pass, but actually what can we be thankful for right now that we already have? That doesn't mean that we don't make requests to the Lord and ask him. Just like in scripture, we see like, right? Like Jabez was like, hey, Lord, increase my territory. Keep me free from pain. Increase my territory. And the Lord said he was more honorable. So it doesn't mean we don't ask, but is it asking on the foundation of thanksgiving? Or is it asking on the foundation of, I don't have this and I deserve to have it? This one verse stuck out to me. If I could just share this real quick. It was, um, it was Philippians 4, starting in verse 6. We know it really well, but maybe this will hit a little differently and be a little fresh for all of us. I'm praying as we consider what Pastor Prince is talking about. And it's, uh, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, I think we get that part a lot, but we leave this part out. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. So I was just thinking about, I think a lot of times we we quote this verse and we're like, you know, make your requests made known to God, like, you know, by prayer and supplication. That's the answer to anxiety. But it goes on like even more like, but what's the foundation of your ask and your request? It's actually to recognize everything you can already be thankful for. And I think that's exactly what Jesus did when he had the five loaves and the two fishes. He, he was asking the father, right? Father, you see the demand. You see what's being demanded of us here. But I'm so thankful for what's in my hand. And so I just want to encourage you, like even you know, just to be just vulnerable and open and honest, like oftentimes, you know, Lindsay knows this. Sometimes if there's like a lack of activity for me, I can start to get a little fidgety. Um, I can start to get like, oh man, things are kind of quiet. Things are kind of silent. I'd like a little bit more activity. And I've recognized that I've tied my satisfaction to activity, but I'm learning, I'm learning to, Lord, I'm thankful for quiet. I'm thankful for, wow, there's not a whole lot going on right now. And I can look at that as, oh, that's just a little, that's just something little. Lord, thank you so much for just being able to be quiet right now and not have that much going on. I don't know about you, but sometimes isn't that a blessing to be thankful for that? So I just want to encourage you. Yeah, I want to encourage you that um, it's okay to ask and make requests of the Lord but what precedes the feast? What precedes the harvest? What precedes the miracle? Um, this verse just reminds me of what Pastor Prince was talking about. It's sitting down for a moment and saying, Lord, there's so much to be thankful for. But I feel like that awareness comes when we refresh ourselves about the cross. Because if we're not refreshing ourselves about the cross, oftentimes we're looking at the things we don't have and we start working for those things, thinking we deserve them. And when we get them, we're not as satisfied as we thought we'd be. I just, I love, um, I just wanted to like take notes while you were talking. Um, but what stuck, it stuck out to me as well is the, um, I deserve, I deserve this. I deserve that. And I feel like that ultimately can come down to like a lack mentality. So like I'm doing all this stuff and I deserve to have this. Like I, or maybe I am not doing this, so I don't deserve to have this, that it's that lack mentality. 
Um, but the truth is like, none of us deserve anything. Like none of us are where we should be. Um, but we are here because of Christ's finished work at the cross. So when you have that mind shift of, I should, I deserve, um, all of this stuff, you know, should be given to me and you switch it to thank you, Lord, that I'm not where I deserve to be. Thank you that you saved me. Thank you that you love me. Thank you that you provide to provide for me. And I feel like a um, great way to kind of switch that um, mentality is even how you pray instead of that, like begging prayer, like, please, Lord, please. I ask this of you, please, please, please. It's I thank you, Lord, that I already, I thank you that you have done this for me. I thank you that you will continue to do this for me. Just that little shift um, to switch to gratitude instead of deserving. Um, and one verse that I love that, um, when I am feeling that way, like, man, like, doesn't anyone see what I'm doing or, you know, how come I'm still doing this, but no one's saying thank you. And kind of, I feel like being a mom, you can kind of go to that Martha place. Like, don't you care? Don't you care? Um, but one verse is Psalm 118, 24. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. And that can instantly shift a bad mood. Like, Hey, the Lord made this day. So whether it's a good day and it, like coffee's perfect, no traffic, like the best day ever. Or if it's not a good day, if you're in pain, if you're going through things, it's still the day that the Lord has made. So we rejoice because we woke up, we're breathing. We have, you know, roofs over our head. It's a good day. And we can rejoice that the Lord made the day because he is good. Like that whole Psalm 118 starts out saying, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his mercy endures forever. So that's why we can praise the Lord because he is good. He's going to turn it all out for our good and for his glory. So to have that mind shift of none of us are where we should be and just thankful that we're here. I feel like it's just such a game changer. Yeah. And, you know, I, Lindsay, I just, um, and Pastor Josh, I was like really um, so touched by the, you know, what you shared about John 6, 22, 23, and how, you know, the Holy Spirit took, um, you know, great pains to, you know, record that um, Jesus gave thanks, right? And that, you know, um, when I was reading the different versions of the Bible, that in the New Living Translation, um, it says that Jesus blessed the loaves and the fishes. And I just saw like, you know, it's God's way of blessing us when we, you know, give thanks. And so thanksgiving and blessings are kind of like really in interconnected. Um, when we have a heart of thanksgiving, we'll see blessings, right? We'll be blessed to be a blessing out of that overflow. And it just so touched my heart that, you know, Jesus gave thanks. Um, and, and the Bible says it so beautifully that he gave thanks for the five loaves and two fishes, which was so little, so little in comparison to the tens of thousands of people that, you know, he knew needed to be fed. But, um, you know, even when I was reading that, I felt like um, it's so interesting because the, the subtitle, the header of that segment of scripture actually says, you know, the bread of life, some Bible version says it's, you know, bread from heaven. And I, I was just reminded that even as Jesus lifted up those loaves to give thanks, he would have known that, you know, one day soon he would be going to the cross and his body was going to be broken, crushed and beaten to become that bread of life for us. And that, you know, we would have eternal life when we trusted in his finished work. Um, and that really just humbled me so much that our God is, you know, such a loving God that, you know, was willing to even, you know, condescend to give, let his body be broken. And, you know, it, and yet he was able to give thanks on top of that. You know, it's not like, okay, I'll go and do it for, you know, these, you know, sinners, but no, the Lord did it joyfully. He did it with thanksgiving. And I'm thinking like, you know, can we 
you know, like just really, really live a life of thanksgiving. But the word of God does say it is the will of God for us who are in Christ Jesus in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, that in all circumstances we give thanks. And I think it is possible when we um, meditate on the right things, right, on things that are beautiful and from above, on the finished work, on what Jesus has already accomplished, I love how pastor teaches us, you know, these beautiful truths. And it is not difficult to give thanks. And, um, you know, when we give thanks, we're just really adding value to the things that we're giving thanks for, to the people we're giving thanks for. It appreciates in value. Um, and, you know, even for pain, you know, so I was asking the Lord, like, you know, Lord, I, I, in, if it says in all circumstances, does that then mean that if I'm in pain, I can give thanks? Well, you know, it's interesting, but there is actually an illness where, you know, uh, someone can not feel pain at all. And a lot of times when that is the condition of the person, uh, a lot of them actually die prematurely because they don't even realize they're in danger, right? They don't even feel that they have a cut and they need to attend to it. And, you know, we can give thanks that we feel the pain, but, you know, we don't have to live in that pain. We can give thanks for the work of the cross that has already taken the pain. And there's just so much in this ministry that we've learned from Pastor Prince that, um, you know, make, giving thanks is not difficult at all, but we forget, we forget. And I thought that it would be so good if I could, re, you know, get all of us to do a, a kind of like a journal, like every day, you know, have a little booklet or even put it in your phone and, you know, just write it down. What are five things that I'm going to be thanking the Lord for today? You know, what am I going to be thankful for? Whether it's people, circumstances, situations that I'm in, even the lack that I'm experiencing and believing that the Lord is going to multiply the abundance to us and you know so this little journal that we can you know just write down is an activity right now if all of you would like to just do something um, as I'm sharing you can also share on our chat uh, what are some of these things that are um, people that you want to be thankful for? And, and we'd love to, you know, talk about it later. And, you know, for those of us who are joining us and watching us on podcasts or on demand, at a, you know, feel free to even pause. You know, you can pause the screen and then the play at this time and just write down, you know, what are some of the people and, and the situations that you want to be thankful for? And I believe that as we do that, we just stepping into the consciousness of his presence at every moment in our lives. And when we give thanks, that's what happens. We become conscious of the Lord and not conscious of the problem. And when that happens, miracles take place like pastor josh was saying it precedes right thanksgiving precedes the miracle and i'm just so thankful for you know pastor's rhema word to remind us of thanksgiving um and you know just wanted to also let everyone know that you know thanksgiving is also the holy communion right because eucharist the eucharist as we partake together we're thanking jesus for his grace in giving us his life and we're going to be partaking of that in a short while um but you know just get ready your elements and prepare our hearts to be ready to receive every breakthrough that we're believing god for amen amen, amen. amen. Thank you, Jessica. Oh, that's great. Hey, Lindsay, I've got a question for you. Um, sure. How do we teach our children to be thankful? Because, you know what I mean? Like, sometimes yes. it's challenging, like, you know, as believers, before we have a meal together, uh, obviously for our children, we, we teach them to give thanks and say grace. But mm -hmm. after some time, like, it, it can feel a little bit like what Pastor was referencing, just a little bit mechanical and so i was just wondering like you know how, how do we help our children uh yeah. you know be thankful yeah I, I feel like especially with um like saying grace before you eat that's something that even our house we're like did you pray did you pray like <laughs> it's just something you do before you eat yes. and when you take the time to sit down and um just explain why why do we pray before we eat you know, that the Lord has blessed us, that he's given us provision, that we're able to buy food, that there are people, um, you know, that, that can't have what we have and, you know, the fresh vegetables and fresh fruit and things that we have. And, um, 
it teaches them that gratitude, that it's not just something we do. It's not just going through the motions. It's not, we pray in the morning and read something just, just to do it because we're supposed to. It's um, truly being in that place of thankfulness. And I feel like that's something, um, especially with Izzy and Noah lately with summer happening and them being off and us not being off, they're spending more time together. So butting heads a little bit more. So that's even a conversation I had with them this morning while we were driving to our office um, was, yes, you guys are annoying each other right now. Um, Noah's doing this to annoy you. You're doing this to annoy him. But can we take a moment and just thank Jesus that you have each other, you know, that you have this beautiful relationship that most of the time you do get along great and that, you know, Jesus loves us so much and gives us grace. So when Noah is talking like a baby is, can you give him grace that he won't do that anymore? And is when you roll your eyes at him, can he give you grace? (laughs) You know? So it's just, I feel like just teaching them, you know, none of us deserve anything, you know, so to kind of walk through that with them and to not just take advantage that we have a healthy brother and sister, or we have food on our plates and just to kind of make them aware of that. And I love the idea um, that Jess had about the journaling, because for me, journaling is a little bit intimidating. Um, But that is so, it's such a simple thing to do. If you just think of a list and just write those down. And I feel like when you are practicing gratitude, it kind of pours fresh grace into things. So what you're initially just starting writing five things down, that's going to, you know, open up your heart and the Lord is going to speak to you more and you can write your prayers down. And it is an easy way to journal. And that's even something you can do with kids. Like ours are only nine and six but they know how to write. Or even if they don't know how to spell things perfectly, you can have them write a list like, Jesus, this is what I'm thankful for today. This is what is maybe annoying me today. Thank you that you are pouring your grace into those areas. Really good. Thank you, Lindsay. I remember when Pastor Prince was uh, preaching this message. I was with Phyllis in the first service. I know my boys, they are 16 and 14 now. They were coming together for the second service. So when Pastor was preaching this great word, I was just, you know, texting my boys to go like, hey, I know you're coming for the second service. And Pastor Prince is preaching this amazing, powerful and impactful word. And I just pray that, you know, um, come to church today with an open heart to really receive this word. Because that's what I really desire for, for my teenagers, right? That they don't grow up with a sense of entitlement, that they don't grow up with a sense of familiarity, that the things that we have, the home that we have, the food that we have, the the bond that we have as a family. Like I I think when I think about what it means to be living in grace, really is about figuring out how to live with thankfulness. Living with grace is about living with with gratitude. Mm -hmm. Living this life of grace, it's it's not, because it's so easy. You know, it's so easy, I think, to find fault and have a spirit that is complainy and complacent. And, you know, and it's something that it doesn't take the Holy Spirit. The the spirit of complaint and a spirit of familiarity and a spirit of entitlement. It's so easy, right, to have a spirit of complaint. So I really want my my children to grow up and I want myself and and Phyllis to, to be that as well, to depend on the Holy Spirit to not be complaining. But really, like ask the Holy Spirit to show us when we can't see and we're not conscious or we become familiar so that the things that the blessings that we used to give thanks for just become like normalcy. It's just normal. Hey, you know, I, I was reading, you know, about a nation uh, recently. And the biggest concern in how these people are, are brought up in this nation is when they have a meal. Their greatest concern is not about their future, their work. Their greatest concern is like, when will I have my next meal? Mm. It's about survival. It's about just believing that, hoping that there's sustenance in the next, you know. So I feel like, how do I expose my my children and our hearts to this? Because I think it defines the day for us, doesn't it? How you start the day and how you end the day makes all the difference. So I I think about it this way. We can start the day looking up for trouble, all the trouble that's ahead, 
we can start the day looking out for all the, the long to-do lists. The floor that needs to be cleaned, the laundry that needs to be done, the email that needs to be replied, the, the things that need to be fixed, the, the washer that, that you know needs to be you know taken care of, the, the kids that need to be sent somewhere. You know, so it's either I, I feel like naturally I can wake up in the, and start the day and go like begin with all the troubles that I feel are hit. This person that I need to talk to, this challenge in the ministry, this person that's going through like, you know, all the trouble or trouble in my own life, trouble with my kids, trouble with this. Or I can begin the day with like all the to-do lists, all the things I need to get done today before the day is out. Versus just taking a pause in the morning and telling myself, hey, Darren, could you begin today with Thanksgiving? Could you begin the day not focusing on all the trouble all the to-do lists, all the things that need to be done and just begin the day asking the Lord to open my eyes to see the things that I cannot see, that I'm no longer thankful for. And it doesn't have to be long. It's just, just a few minutes just listening to Pastor Prince preach on this just reminded me that like I just need to take those moments in the day, how I start the day and how I end the day at night. You know, and I just want to encourage you all to, to do that as well. And, and just if this, this is something that, that speaks to you, because we could just go by and go by and life gets busy and activity and more trouble and more to-do lists. It doesn't go away. Have you noticed that? But to live in grace, right? The Lord reminds us like, hey, do not worry about tomorrow. But there's sufficiency. There's sufficient grace for Today, there is sufficiency, there's abundance of supply, abundance of grace, abundance. And, and as, as I see that abundance from the Lord, that God is not lacking, that God is not, Jesus is not lacking. Jesus is not, um, me, his hand is not meager towards me and my house. Mm. Yeah. Right? His heart is not small. He's not looking to withhold. He's looking to resource. And I speak that over all of us. Like I'm thankful for every single person that is tuning in to GRC, that is part of this church, that is tuning in on Sundays, that is tuning in now. We've just launched our midweek service. That, that takes time. Like you could be doing something else. You could be watching something on Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Hulu, Peacock, you name it, right? It's hard to keep up, right? There's so many services out there, right? that's distracting us from the word of God, but I'm thankful that you are here, that you're taking this time to be with us to talk about the word of God. I'm thankful for everyone that calls GRC home, right? Even, even all around the world, like I was looking at our YouTube channel and, and people are watching this and responding to, to this from all around the world. And I, I love it when they share where they're watching from. And, and it's exciting. I'm thankful that there's technology that allows us to deliver and minister the word of God to you, right? And I really believe that as we give thanks for GRC, as we give thanks for Pastor Prince's ministry, like not take for granted that Pastor will just show up on Sunday with a great word, but, but to pray for Pastor, to pray for his family, to give thanks for him because what we give thanks for multiplies. What we give thanks for, and, and for years, Pastor has preached this, right? You, you give thanks for it, you value it. What you value will appreciate. And it's, it appreciates your heart to, to be receptive, to, to receive the word. Like what I did with my sons, right? Before they came to church on Sunday, I wanted them to, to come and appreciate that, hey, Pastor Prince brought an amazing word. It's just, don't, don't come, like go through the motion to just go through another service. Like this is what we do. We're, we're believers. We go to church on Sundays. But, but to come with a heart of appreciation, come with a heart of expectation, there's an old song I used to sing in, in, in church, which is like, I will, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. And, and you know, the, the, the house of God, the local church, the, the digital church, GRC and all that we are, we, we are about being a house of prayer. And imagine all of us joining our thanksgiving together. Mm. All of us appreciating 
the Lord Jesus, like what we're going to do later as Jessica leads us in communion, we are appreciating our Lord Jesus for giving his body so that we can be redeemed, for allowing his, his body to be beaten so that we can receive healing, for allowing his, his blood to be shed so that we can receive forgiveness and the gift of eternal life because of the finished work. We're taking a moment every day as we partake of the Holy Communion to give thanks for the cross. Notice how we're, we're not doing this digital care group on Thanksgiving, right, Josh? In November, we don't need to wait for November to celebrate Thanksgiving, right? And we're not talking about the finished work and the cross in April during Easter and Resurrection Sunday. But as we partake communion and, and we give thanks for towards the Lord, we give thanks for our children, we give thanks for our, uh, our, our spouse, mm -hmm. right? In any area that you're seeing depletion and lack in, whether it's an area of your finances, an area of your marriage, an area of your relationship with your children, before we think about the trouble and the to-do list in those areas, could we pause for a moment and find something that we can give thanks to the Lord for? Mm -hmm. And then from there, go a step further and, and tell your children, tell your spouse, I get to celebrate my 20th anniversary with Phyllis this year in September. And I'm looking forward to that, like 20 years of, of marriage. And I'm, I'm excited for that. And I'm so grateful, right, that the Lord gave me Phyllis as my wife. And I read a quote somewhere that, you know, who you, you know, decide as your life partner will determine 90% of your happiness or 90% of your sorrow. <laughs> I told my kids that. I'm like, hey, I know you're teenagers, but this is a big decision, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And just speaking that into their future as well. So I'm so grateful that, that you know, Phyllis is such a big part of, you know, the, the, the blessing that I've experienced in, in my life. So don't just give thanks to God. Share that thanksgiving with your loved ones. Right? Don't, don't just listen to this digital category today. Pick up the phone, right? You know, after this session, and just think of the people that you love and have forgotten to thank recently right and just like taking them for granted and ask the holy spirit to show you the thing is you may not even be conscious of what you are not thanking god and people for mm. we need the holy spirit because we're not just talking about the natural sense of gratitude we're mm -hmm. talking about the supernatural sense of god opening the eyes of our hearts and the ears of our hearts to go like hey you know why you're not thanking me in this area because we've become entitled, right? And there's no shame in that. I'm not speaking that out of condemnation. I, I experience it, right? Josh, I'm sure we all do, right? Like this is yep. areas where we've just right. grown complacent. We're not necessarily complaining, but we've just grown complacent. Mm -hmm. It's just there, you know? We take it for granted. Like, you know, we wake up and there's, there's coffee and we wake up and there's, you know, my kids wake up and there's, you know, breakfast and, there's a dining table that they can sit. There's a chair. Like, you know, we just miss out on, we're not complaining necessarily, but we have missed out and, and become familiar with the blessings that God has blessed us with. Mm -hmm. So could, could you do this? Could you just reach out to someone today? Could you invite someone to watch this digital character? Could you invite someone to our midweek service? Like we can grow familiar. Be like, oh yeah, we have church. Yeah, we know GRC online. And, and, but someone doesn't. And if this ministry and pastor's ministry has been a blessing to you, could you share the service timings? Every time you come to church, every time you watch the show care group, you know, share the website with them, share, share the, the content that's online with them, share the YouTube channel with them, and, and be a blessing. Amen? Hope that blesses you all. And just want to invite Jessica right now to lead us in a time of Holy Communion. Thank you, Pastor. And, you know, I, I'm so thankful that um, I've been reminded of, you know, not being familiar because um, I want to give thanks even for all the resources that, you know, the pastor and the ministry team have create, curated that has been such a blessing. But sometimes we even forget that they're there and we're so familiar because, you know, I've shared in, you know, partaking of the Holy Communion, you know, often. And, you know, I can just 
say a prayer, it, it, it seems so simple, right? But, you know, the Holy Spirit just put on my heart yesterday, I reached out to the book, um, Eat Your Way, you know, on the, through the Holy Communion to health and wholeness. Um, and I was so blessed just reading the first few pages. And I just felt like I didn't want to be familiar and to say and repeat, you know, like, even if it's not a vain repetition, but I, 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 I just read in that first few pages, this amazing, you know, quote that um, Jesus never, you know, did not walk on water all the time. Jesus did not you know, um, calm the storms all the time. But the Bible says Jesus healed all, all the time. Jesus was always healing. And isn't it such a blessing that our Lord knows our needs even before we ask? And, you know, today, right now, any one of us here needing a healing breakthrough, needing healing, you know, or even wanting to believe for health and wholeness, you know, supernatural divine health and wholeness, for vitality, for strength, for renewal of youth, for youthfulness, right? The Lord has already paid the price for it. And he is healing all the time. So today, let's just be in that posture of giving thanks for what the Lord has already done and receive that healing for today, that health and wholeness. And as we value that, as we value the bread and the cup and the symbol and the power that it is, it represents, right? We know that it's going to appreciate, it's going to multiply. And I believe that it's going to be such a robust, release of God's health and wholeness that Jesus has already paid for. So just come with that, you know, heart that is open to receive. And let's just lift up the broken body of our Lord Jesus together. Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you. Oh Lord, we thank you so, so much for loving us. This bread and cup that we hold in our hands is the greatest expression of your love for us. We thank you, Lord, that we are at the Lord's table and that, Lord, this is a table where you have prepared for us a feast in the presence of enemies, maybe, but it is a feast to celebrate and rejoice because you have finished the work. And we thank you so much, Lord, that this is a table that is that you've called us to come and feast on that your own nail pierced hands have prepared for us yes. and you just ask us to come to come and to receive from you so we thank you for this broken body we thank you that lord the chastisement of our peace was upon you at the cross and by your stripe we are healed we receive it we thank you and we know that lord in the days to come we will experience supernatural divine health and wholeness to the fullest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us partake and receive. Let's lift up the cup. This is the cup of the new covenant. Father, we thank you that this is the precious blood of your Son that was shed at the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. We thank you, Lord, that not only have you washed and sent away and remitted all our sins once and for all, but Lord, you have made us in Christ the righteousness of God. And we thank you that as the righteous are bold, we are bold here to give thanks to receive every single blessing that your word promises. We thank you. The blessings are on the head of the righteous. We thank you, Lord, that you will continue to open the hearts of our understanding, the eyes of our understanding to see the glorious finished work of our Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this precious blood. Let's drink. Hallelujah. Let's go out and believe we have the victory because Christ has made us more than conquerors through the finished work. Amen? Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. You guys think it's a good idea? If you feel good about it, I would love to do this. If you have your chat opened up right now, how about we do this? Would you share with everybody? Let's 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 make this a Thanksgiving party, like when it's not even Thanksgiving. All right. Are you guys okay with that? Is that cool? Let's go. Cool. So we're gonna do that. Let's enjoy some Thanksgiving together by putting one word in the chat or putting your hand up in the chat. Um, if you want to even share, maybe we could just one thing. I think it's powerful. Imagine if each of us brings one thing we can thank God for. And even what, what past the prince is talking about, like whatever we're thankful for multiplies, right? Appreciates. Imagine if all of us do that together as a community, GRC online, that is so powerful from New York, to California, Texas, to Colorado, Alaska, Canada, wherever you're watching from. It's like we're covering the map with Thanksgiving. Um, I am excited about that. Let's do that even right now in the chat. Let's just throw out whatever we're thankful for. And uh, I see unmerited favor. I'm thankful for Jesus. Uh, Salvation. If you want to share too, put your hand up. Uh, We'd love to call maybe a couple of people. I just see everybody putting in right now. The Holy Spirit, thankful for the Holy Spirit. Believing grace-filled spouse. Can I get a good amen? I'm amen. thankful for that. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> thankful for the Rhema word. I'm thankful for that. That is something that I never want to take for granted, being a part of Pastor Prince's ministry. We always get that. I'm so thankful. Let's never become familiar with that. Thankful for everyone here tonight. Family. That's beautiful. Fenice, would you be able to turn on your mic and share one thing that you're thankful for? Sure, sure. I am very thankful. I'm thankful to GRC and, and New Creation and Pastor Prince's ministry um, for pointing me, for, for Christ pointing me to your ministry. And had it not, <laughs> this is it's crazy. But had it not been for COVID, I don't know if I'd be here. COVID gave me the opportunity to to be still, to be still and wait on Christ. And Christ pointed me to your ministry. So I'm very thankful for that. Very thankful. Don't get me to Praise the Lord. Thank you, (laughs) Penice. Praise the Lord. It's amazing. Love that. Ken and Leanne, would you mind turning your mic on and just sharing what you're thankful for? Uh, We're thankful. Home is a big thing for us right now. We're moving to a new place. So we're thankful for our old home. We're in that right now. Our new home and mostly our eternal home. That's what we're really looking forward to. It's amazing. We, We celebrate together with you guys. That's amazing. Janess, what are you thankful for? I'm so thankful that I have a personal relationship with my Lord and Savior, because I remember a time when I didn't know him the way I know him today. So I'm so grateful that I know him and I can call him my father. Amen. 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 That's powerful. Thank you so much for sharing that, Janess. New Joy, Lane, would you share with us? I am thankful for the day that my youngest daughter gave me the book Destined to Reign which was like in 2008, I think. And I tell you, my life has not been the same. I'm going to just say this really quick. When I was a little girl, like about 12 years old, I got kind of like kicked out of a church. (laughs) Oh, my God. And I vowed, I was so embarrassed because I wore pants. I didn't know you couldn't wear pants to church. So I wore (laughs) pants. (laughs) And they really beat me up bad and, you know, embarrassed me. (laughs) So... I was like, I'm never going to church again. So finally, um, I gave my life to Jesus when my youngest daughter, I mean, my eldest daughter was three years old. And I still didn't go to church, though. You know, I I was like in my bathroom. But so I'm kind of radical, you know, and and I'm really filled with his love just being here. I, I, I tried a lot of different places and experiences. But I know I'm in the right place, and GRCO is my home. So if you see me putting all these emojis up and and, and celebrating with look praises, it's because I know how good God is. I love you guys. I'm gonna stop now before I start crying and take up too much time. Thank <laughs> you. I love you. 
We love you. We love you. Thank you. And it's so good to put a face to the name because I see the name often, but now I have a face to it. So we are thankful for you and your praise hands. Oh, hallelujah. And feel free to to join uh, New Joy Lane with some emojis, (laughs) some emojis. Um, we, we, we like them. We invite them. They're welcome here. Um, in this church, you can bring emojis. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Um, very thankful for all of you. Thank you so much for all of you and what you've shared and continue flood the chat, flood the lobby with Thanksgiving. How about we do that? If you're able to, even after this, go to the lobby and flood it with Thanksgiving. How do we do that? Not by just conjuring up Thanksgiving. But obviously, we say thank you after we receive the gift. Mm -hmm. So I was just thinking about something as everybody was sharing. Why are our thank yous uh, very few sometimes? Because our receiving is very small. So if our receiving is small, our thank yous will be low. So what do we do? We just try to up our thank yous like in our own strength? No, go back to how much you've already received and what you can even receive in a fresh way right now. And your thank yous are going to soar through the roof. Um, So I just want to encourage you guys to remind yourselves what you've received. You've received every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus that will affect every area of your practical life. It's not something that's not tangible. It just comes from the spirit and it affects all the tangible areas of your life that have to do with the practical things that are close to your heart. I want to encourage you with that. Pastor Darren, you have anything else you'd like to share? No, I'm just so grateful for... For you, mm-hmm. Pastor Josh and Lindsay, I'm so glad that, you know, the Lord caused our paths to, to cross, you know, about six years ago now. And you've been part of this ministry for the last five years. And, you know, grateful for, for Jessica. We've got to serve the Lord together, right, Jessica, now for, I don't know, has it been 18 years? 17. 17 years together, you know, and, you know, building and serving our Lord but also going yeah. out to figure out how to acquire our first broadcast airtime in America. So, and, and we get to serve the Lord and, and minister the word together with our GRCO family here. Um, so much to be thankful for. So I, I really yeah. pray that this is the, the posture of our life. Not just when we're talking about it, but it just becomes so naturally supernatural that we're always looking out for, even in the darkest times, right? That we're always looking out for what what we can give thanks for. Even when there seems to be nothing to be thankful for, that supernaturally through the spirit of grace that we, the Lord will just cause our eyes to be open. And I really think that's pastor's heart for all of us. I think that's pastor's DNA. I think this is the heart of the house that, that, and I just want to flow with like our spiritual father, you know, Pastor Prince, and just like lay hold and catch his heart for us. That this is how we can live out grace daily, right? Unto the Lord and towards one another. Amen. 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 And I'm, I'm just to close, we could go on because there is a lot to be thankful for. I'm thankful that destined to reign made it to my household back in 2009 in New York. Um, I would never have dreamed that Lindsay and I and our family would actually be able to be a part of the ministry that God raised up um, to preach radically the gospel of grace that impacted us. I don't, I can't even tell you, I don't know how we're here to be honest. I'm not sure how we got here. Um, it has to be the grace of God, and I'm thankful for that. Um, so thankful for our senior pastor, Pastor Prince, and how the Lord has used him in such a great way to change our family tree forever and uh, beyond probably what we're even going to see if Jesus tarries. Um, very thankful for that. Thankful for Pastor Darren and Phyllis and Deacon Jessica, the whole team that does everything behind the scenes right here at GRC Online. They're behind the scenes right now, but we see you and we're thankful for you. Um, Can we thank God for them right now? We're thankful for you guys. Um, And everyone that serves here at GRC Online, we're thankful for you. Um, The chat hosts and people who caused this experience to be such that we can receive the gospel of grace in a community together. 
So I want to encourage all of you, continue to come. Let's not forsake the assembling together of the saints, as is the manner of some, but all the more as the day draws near, let us continue to feast on the finished work of Jesus under our pastor's ministry that is so special and I really believe so unique. Um, I want to encourage you. This care group is available on every major streaming platform. You can watch it on demand. Go to our website. Enjoy our midweek services on Wednesdays, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Enjoy them. Guys, in this whole talk of Thanksgiving, the spirit of Thanksgiving, this is way, way too good to keep to yourself, isn't it? Is this way too good to keep to yourself? Give it away to somebody. Give the care group away. Uh, give Jesus away. Give the gospel of grace away to somebody. Ask the Lord right now, even in this moment, Lord, put somebody on my heart. Lead me, guide me. And I believe he's doing that right now. So we can't wait to see you next time for Digital Care Group. Continue to come, continue to receive. Um, and I believe your thank yous are gonna just soar and go through the roof. Um, can't wait to hear all your praise reports in the lobby, all your prayer requests. Let's flood the lobby with Thanksgiving. If you haven't joined, I would encourage you to join. See you next time. We love you guys. See you next time.